to the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise and I'm coming to you today from my home in Yonkers, New York, where I live with my husband and our two children. You can find me on the internet as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram. I also have a Ravelry account. You can find me there too. And the podcast has an email address, which is earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. Hello! It has been three weeks to the day since I've been here. I am so sorry. (laughs) It has just been such a crazy three weeks. Um, I recorded the last episode on Valentine's Day, Wednesday, February 14th, and the following week my son was off from school and then the week after that the, for some reason we all seem to have doctor's appointments everybody's fine just all checkup appointments and um, follow-ups on things and then this past week I just don't even know what happened I was just so swamped with things to do and I just haven't had the time to sit here and chat um, Obviously, my daughter's in school full-time, but my son is only in school three mornings a week, so I really only have three opportunities a week to do this, and those three opportunities get filled up very quickly, (laughs) Um, because then I have to decide, do I podcast or do I run errands child-free, which means I can do them ten times faster. Anyway, all of that aside, I am so happy to be back here with you. Um, It has been a very busy three weeks, both personally and regarding the podcast um we did i did the giveaway which i wanted to talk about here and i'm so sorry i didn't get a chance to do that um but i just decided to go ahead and do it on instagram and it was such a huge success i'm so happy with how that went and just i i feel like i'm saying thank you at every episode and i really hope that that doesn't become monotonous or sound insincere because it's really really not i am so grateful to everyone that participated in the podcast and started following me on instagram and all of the new subscribers to the podcast so welcome back to all of our returning viewers and a huge huge welcome again to all of the new subscribers all the new viewers i am so happy to have you all here today Oh my goodness. So um, we did have a winner. I did pick a winner for the giveaway. Her name on Instagram is Dana Brown Daily. Uh, I will put her information down here. You should go check out her feed. It's really, really interesting, really fun to look at. Uh, So congratulations again, Dana. Your package is in the mail. I was determined to get that in the mail before the weather that has now hit us. Um, I'm going to try to get through most of this episode. (laughs) We'll see how it goes. It is a snow day here on the East Coast. Another nor'easter is hitting us. So my children are home from school. They are being babysat right now by the TV. I know that's bad parenting, but I really wanted to record this. So fingers crossed that they stay quiet and everybody's peaceful. (laughs) Um, So I promise to make it up to them later uh, with reading and all that good stuff. So I... That's pretty much, let me just check notes for a second. And yes, there is a gigantic, let's just talk about this really quick. There's a gigantic Band-Aid on my face. And this was another reason why I was hesitating to record. Um, I wanted it to heal a little bit more before I took this off. Um, I just had, everything's fine. I just had a little something removed from my cheek. And um, doctor wasn't sure what it was. It turned out to be fine. It's benign. Everything's okay. Yay. Um, But it left a really large divot hole crater (laughs) I don't know what you want to call it but it was awful and I'm still keeping a band-aid on it just to um stop birds from nesting in it It, that's that's how big it was it was disgusting (laughs) sorry I won't go into any more about that um but I wanted to wait for it to heal and you know what it's healing it is healing really well but very slowly so I now have a nervous tick where I touch my face all the time so I apologize in advance um so yeah I said you know what I'm just gonna get over it and record because I miss talking to all of you and there is so much to share, so much to talk about. I am, as usual, over the moon excited about all of my knitting projects. So I think, well, I think we've covered all of the stuff and I think we should, all the admin, and I think we should just jump in and let's talk knitting, you guys, because there's a lot. I'm back. So just to, um, 
give you a little, I guess, table of contents for this episode. I've got two finished objects to share with you. Uh, I have two whips and lots and lots of book information and knit along information to share. So um, everything, of course, will be down in the description box below so you don't have to go far. I will add links to everything for you. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the first FO that I have, my February socks are done. I, let's pull back so you can see them. They are done, you guys. Look at that. Off the needles. I love these so much. I can't tell you the colors, the colorway, the way that it's striped. I know I mentioned this on the last episode. I was a little surprised by the striping, but it, I just absolutely love it. I love these big wide stripes of gray. I love the dark gray with the sort of plum color in the middle, but they are done. This yarn is, the name of this colorway is Heartbreaker by The Cozy Knitter. Again, all of that will be down there for you and in the description box. And it is on her Bliss base. I think that's an 80-20. So 80% um, Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon. And they're just gorgeous, just gorgeous. I did my usual um, weaving in my ends as I knit along. And this is 64 stitches. Oh, wait, no, these are not 64 stitches. That's what I wanted to say. These, I decided the last pair that I did, which were the Huga socks for January, they are almost perfect, but they're a, they're a little teeny bit slouchy, and that's fine. I wouldn't wear them with like a clog or anything. I would wear them more with um, boots but I wanted these to fit a little more snug and be able to wear them in shoes. So I dropped down to 60 stitches, still on a 2.25 high, high, sharp. Those are my go-to needles. I just changed the stitch count and what a difference. Oh my gosh, wow. Um, of course I had to adjust the fish lips kiss heel numbers a little bit, but that was, it's, it was next to nothing. Um, so these are all done, 60 stitches. Love them. The fit is just gorgeous. I love the colors. They're so fun. <laughs> so February socks are done. I, again, absolutely love them. If you have not had a chance to get your hands on some of the Cozy Knitter yarn, um, the genius behind that is Christina. I highly recommend her yarn. It is just so soft, so squishy. It's just wonderful. So those are finished object number one. Finished object number two. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> they, wait, let's get, let me make sure I get these in the right order here. Done! <laughs> Look at these, you guys! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I also, before I even go into these, I apologize too for the lighting. It is very, very... The snow is coming down. It's got to be about two inches an hour out there right now. And it is very dark outside. The lighting in here is not that great today. Um, so I really hope that that's not too much of a distractor for you. I actually, my bathroom in my room is right over here. And I have the light on. And I'm hoping that that kind of helps with the lighting a little bit. So I apologize for the lighting being so bad in this episode. But we'll, we will... We will um, continue, plug, plunge on. Um, but here they are. Selbu mittens are done, you guys. Oh my God, they're done. They're done. Look at these. They're blowing out a little bit, but look at them. Oh my gosh, here's the back. Here's the front. Look at that thumb. Oh my word. I have not blocked these yet. They are on. I literally finished the thumbs last night. <laughs> Again, it's been such a busy week around here. I have gotten a lot done, but these I really need to concentrate on. And actually, as I was putting the thumbs in, I saw one or two little mistakes, which I will, um, I'm not even sure anybody will really see them. And as one of my mentors always said, don't point out the mistakes because no one's going to see them. Just you. So just don't even mention them. But I just, I have to mention them. Um, the charts were crystal clear, absolutely wonderful. Um, this pattern is the Selbu Mitten by Skandir Knits. She, this is the first Selbu pattern that she put out. She has an entire series of Selbu Mittens that consist of four patterns. This is not part of that club, but this is the first um, pair that she designed. It's done in a DK weight yarn and, oh my word, I just could not be happier with these. I love them. 
so much. It's just, it's just amazing. I mean, look at these, you guys. Look at those thumbs. I can't get over the thumb. There's so much to say about these. So, you know what? Um, the yarn that I used was Barocco Vintage DK. It is a wool acrylic blend. I know acrylic is a bad word. We covered that already before. <laughs> um, but it worked. It worked for these. I absolutely love the color. Would I use this yarn again? Um, yes and no. I have already started a second pair in this yarn, but I'm going to show you. I've paused on them, and I'm going to show you why in a little bit. So just hang on. That's one of the whips. But for a first time knitting these, I am so thrilled with how they came out. Um, knitting something like this is all about patience. I mean, Yes, these really do knit up quickly because of the DK weight. A lot of selbu mittens are traditionally done on fingering weight or even finer, even a lace weight yarn. This is done on the DK, which means it definitely goes a little bit quicker. Um, and I'm so thrilled with the progress. But again, as I said, they take a little while and it's a lot of chart reading. I do these late at night, so I'm not interrupted by family or different things um and you can still make mistakes as i did there's a little glitch i don't know if you can see that right in there i just made one little mistake with the patterning here and i think there's another one right here can i live with that absolutely and i don't know if you can tell but one of these maybe not so much on the blocker i'm going to take them off in a second but one of these is smaller than the other. This was the first one that I knit. And again, I have not blocked these yet, and I, I know a lot will be righted with blocking. This is the first one that I knit, and I tried it on a 100 times as I was knitting along, and I know that had a lot to do with it. My, I thought I knew how to do color work, so I just plunged on ahead. But it's a sloppier looking mitten than this one. Maybe now that I've said it, you might be able to see the difference. Um, this one is much cleaner. The stitches are much neater. It's just, I love this one so very, although this one did end up having the mistake on the, on the palm of the hand, but whatever. Um, love this so, so much. And I learned so much from watching Rachel from Treehouse Knits, also Diana who is Cake and Vikings on Instagram. She has a YouTube channel, which is Paper Tiger Knits. Paper Tiger Knits? Paper Tiger? I'll, I'll put it down here. And <clears throat> she just did, Paper Tiger, Diana just did an episode on her YouTube channel about, she did a whole episode on yarn, and I, and I linked that in my last episode, but she just put out a new episode about stranded color work. And yarn dominance and holding your yarn and all of that um, different tensioning tips and tricks and I watched that and then I knit this one huge huge difference really big difference I prefer the way this one looks it again it's just much cleaner all of the side stitches are so much neater um, it really did make a difference um, the other thing I mean it's just look at that Oh my gosh, just, it's unbelievable. This is really, they're just amazing. Let me pop these off. Let me see, I think I've covered um, the major differences with these. Yeah, because uh, Rachel, who is Treehouse Knits, she had talked about, you know, how to hold your yarn a little differently, which I did, and, let me pull up my sleeves, which I definitely did, and that made a really, really big, really, really big difference, but you know what, I also slowed down. I slow down a lot and I think when the kids go to bed at night, I'm sometimes a little tired. I just want to get the project. I just want to get some rows under my belt. I'm just going to dance for a second. <laughs> I'm doing a happy knitting dance. I'm so happy. So th again, this is the left mitten. This is the first one that I did and you can see how much bigger. It is. There is so much more room, much more wiggle room in here than there is in this one. I don't mind. I love these so much. I had such an amazing time knitting them. I learned so much and it taught me patience. Knitting like this 
is not about speed. It's about patience. It's about slowing down, taking a deep breath, excuse me, really enjoying and taking in what you are knitting. And I really did that with these, especially the second mitten. There's no question. Um, I do have mitten blockers. I was using, these were on these, my little faux handmade ones from the placemat. <laughs> and they're functional, they work. But I did order a gorgeous set from Patricia, who is P4Chen on Instagram, and her YouTube channel is um, Knitography, and she's doing a trunk show knit along um, coming up very soon. She's done an introduction to it, and I think it was already supposed to have started on the 1st. Today is the 7th, I believe, of March. I think it was supposed to have started on the 1st or 2nd, but she was a little under the weather, so that has been sort of delayed a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna show you the book that she's using for that, but I'm, I'm not taking these off. <laughs> Especially on a day like today, they could not be more perfect. They are so warm, they are squishy. I feel like knitting something like this connects me with people that I've never met. It, it makes me feel like I'm part of some type of society, some club, some group of knitters, um, you know, we all now know the secret handshake. <laughs> and it's, I know it sounds silly, but they, it, I've just learned so much and I'm so happy with these. Um, so thank you so much, Ellie, who is Skander Knits for designing these. I, you know what, I was gonna wait and talk about the other mittens, but I just wanna show you right now. So you know what, I'm, I'm not even following my notes at this point, I'm just gonna jump in. So here is mitten number two and or set of mittens number two this is the flora mitten i believe it is the second one second or third in the selbu mitten club series again there's four patterns in that and here is one i saw somebody on instagram had knit these sorry this is my scrap yarn somebody had knit these in this uh color combination and I said okay that's it I've got to knit these immediately I love them so much the reason I've stopped I could have probably finished this whole mitten already I stopped because I don't know if you can see it but the yarn is shedding a little bit the, the yarn is hairy so in the the red is actually starting to fibers from the red are kind of shedding onto the white, which is actually making the white look pink in some areas. Is that a really big deal? No, but it's it's bugging me a little bit. And I may continue with these, I'm not sure, because again, it's really such a minor thing. I may continue with these, um, but I'm not sure yet. And the reason I'm even considering waiting is because I placed a huge order of yarn with the wall guy with it's the name of the company is the wall of yarn um jeffrey wall is the mastermind behind that oh wait i've got pause for one second little man is walking in hold on so i think i was talking about um wall of yarn um by jeffrey wall now there's i know of two yarn shops that are carrying norwegian yarn that you can purchase here in the u.s and that is the woolly thistle um, I believe they're in New Hampshire and Wall of Yarn and I think they are in Illinois. I'm not sure which city, but I have placed an order with him. I know that my yarn is on its way. It has already shipped, but again, who knows when it will get here with this weather. Um, I'm just anxious to have it. I'm, I'm totally happy to wait because I know it'll be worth it, but I am anxious to get it in my hands. And I did order Rama is the name of the, I, I apologize in advance for anybody watching this. Um, there is a Danish uh, woman who watches, oh dear, what is her podcast name? I will put it down here. Um, she's also a new podcaster, she's wonderful. And she left a comment about um, Huga and wanted to talk about it. She just finds it interesting how we Americans are caught up in it right now and our perspective. And she wanted to talk about it on her podcast from the Danish perspective. So um, I can't wait to watch, uh, catch up with her episodes and, and watch her episode and get her perspective. So definitely check out her podcast. But um, where was I going with this? 
Oh, blah, 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 yarn. Okay, so yes, I apologize. That's what I was saying. I apologize because I may say all of these names incorrectly, but Rama is the name of the Norwegian yarn, and there is Fenelgarn, excuse me, which is the fingering weight, and then there's Trikagarn, Trikagarn? I'm sorry. <laughs> That is the DK weight, and I have that coming because I want to do more of these mittens in the proper weight yarn, but I definitely, I think I'm going to finish these, but I definitely don't want to use, um, I don't want to use this Barocco again. Uh, it's just, it's just not right, and I know I have some of the Rama, um, full and garn, the fingering weight yarn, and it is, it's real. It's wonderful and it's real wool, and I can't wait to get it in the DK weight um, so that there isn't all of that shedding. It, it, this is toothy. I mean, it's definitely holding together, but the other thing that um, Diana talked about on her Color Work podcast, which was really interesting, she held up an example of Color Work with non-traditional yarn, so more yarns like this, Cascade 220, things like that, and you can, and then she held up something knit with the true Norwegian yarn, and you can see how the stitches with the non-traditional yarn, how they just sit next to each other versus hugging each other, and it's the hugging of each other that makes the fabric look seamless when you're looking at it versus them sitting next to each other where you can see each individual stitch and when you stretch it the fabric doesn't give as a unit if that does that make any sense you you can actually see I mean dare you stretch it enough you can almost see the floats so she talks a lot about those differences and uh, it's really interesting and and to see the examples and the samples that she knit even her yarn dominance she knit something and carried the yarns one in one hand, one in the other, and then she switched and continued knitting the same thing, and you can definitely see how the one color pops a lot more than the other, depending on what you, what hand you're holding it in. And I carry the background color in my right hand, and I carry the design color in my left. I'm very, very consistent with that. Um, I tried changing that up the other day, just out of curiosity. Uh-uh. <laughs> big mistake. Not only was I confused in my knitting because my hands are so trained to do that, but I, I had to end up ripping back, but the it was a dramatic difference in the way the color work looked. I mean, it was just, there's no way. I mean, there's there's absolutely, you don't see it in, in this one. Um, it was in this one that I was playing with that. And mm -mm, no, 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 no. So I will background in this hand, design in this hand. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, so I'm, I'm as soon as that yarn arrives, I will post pictures of it and talk about it here. I will post pictures of it on Instagram. Um, and you can follow my progress on these projects on Instagram. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about, as you can see, I just cast off, slipped the thumb stitches on a holder, and I cast on, I hope you can see that, I cast on the new stitches here to continue on the palm of the hand. Now, Rachel, who is Treehouse Knits, was the first person that I heard talk about an afterthought thumb. And I mentioned it in my last episode and my jaw hit the ground when I realized that. And I do, I'm very tempted to go back since I just did it on this mitten. I'm very tempted to go back and do the afterthought thumb because and I'll tell you why. Sorry about that. Doing the thumb the other way, where I put the stitches on a holder and went back and did it after, it was not as clean as I would have liked. Not at all. This one came out much cleaner, but this one, I I just, I'm not thrilled with how this looks. It's not as continuous, it's not as smooth as I would have liked. Um, I mean, it may be from a distance, but if you can see, like even here, there's a little glitch in here. I, I just, I was getting really frustrated with it. Again, is anybody really going to notice? No, but as the knitter, as the maker of these, I know it's there and it, it bugs me a little bit. So I can't wait to try these again with the afterthought heel. I mean, I, I was so hesitant to do it with socks and love it. So I can only imagine how happy I will be doing it with the mittens. So I'm definitely going to try that 
on, sorry, I keep hitting the, my little stand for the camera. I apologize. So I can't wait to try that on these. And like I said, I'm so close. I, it wouldn't make sense to not try it on these. Uh, so we'll see. We'll give that, we might give that a go and, uh, I will keep you posted and let you know. So that is that. I think I've covered everything on the mittens for now. I did want to talk about Cal. I mentioned the trunk show knit along that Patricia, who is P4 Chen on Instagram and Nittography on YouTube, she's going to be doing on her YouTube channel. And you should see her intro video to this series is just, she's not speaking. It's beautiful music. It's mittens perfectly displayed on snow and I was drooling. I mean, wiping my mouth drooling. <laughs> they're, they're so beautiful and I've got, I ordered my copy. <laughs> it's here. It arrived about a week or so ago. Um, I was holding off posting it on Instagram because I wanted to do a picture with the yarn which hopefully, fingers crossed again, depending on the weather, will arrive soon. But this is the book. It's Evan Ter, Evan Tervata, I think. I will not even attempt to say the author's name because I will destroy it. So, but here it is. Here's the back of the book. I'm sorry. I apologize about the glare. And it is just the book is all. Oh, I mean, look at look at that. Just look at that picture. Oh my gosh. One more reason to love winter. <laughs> um, this book is absolutely incredible uh the glitch with this book if you want to say that there is a glitch i'm trying to find a really beautiful pattern to show you the one that she talks about a lot um oh wait these are really beautiful wait where's the picture sorry you guys just hang on one aha uh -huh. here's one look at that aren't those beautiful i mean look at those little bunnies and the tree oh i just think these are so sweet and so beautiful here's another one with sheep you can briefly see the chart here's another one with sheep and there's a goat and a donkey i mean these patterns are just incredible now I'm trying to find the other pattern that she aha here it is here they are this is the one i believe that she may start the knit along with um so again the yarn that i I'm waiting on the phenol garn. I actually have some, but I just want a little bit more just in case I don't want to play yarn chicken. So I believe that this is the pattern that she's going to be starting with, this one right here. Now, I've said it twice. The glitch with this beautiful book is, <laughs> it's all in Norwegian. <laughs> Entire book is in, look at that one, oh my word, is in Norwegian. Hence the reason for the knit along. So she is going to talk the knitters, there's another beautiful pair. I know she's gonna be doing these too. Uh, she's going to be talking all of us knitters through these patterns and there are two collections. Some of the patterns in this were pulled out and made into, oh dear, mittens from the fairy forest. Mittens from the forest, fairy forest. I'm sorry, it'll be here. Uh, and there's two. There's the first series and the second series. Those are in English and have been translated. So I think each one might have five to seven patterns in them. Uh, they have been translated into English. I have purchased those. So I just need to print those out. And I believe she is doing them along with the excuse me, patterns from those two collections. She's going to be talking about the book and different things from the book, of course, but again, if you have the uh, English versions of the patterns, it'll just make things a little bit easier. So the two complement each other. So I, as, I, as yet, have not printed those, but I have purchased them. They are in my Ravelry library. So I can't wait to get those on the needles. I'm just waiting for, again, the yarn and for her to start. So hopefully that all will start and happen at the same time, so yay. And I did pick up another book. I'm just buying books. I found another book, This Beauty, uh, another set of patterns from Norway. These are mittens and gloves. Look at those on the front. Here are some more on the back. I just love patterns with the little people on them. I just think that's so cute. Would I have the patience to do fingers? 
I don't know, maybe, we'll see. I will never, absolutely not say it, never. Um, this book is in English, thank goodness, yay. <laughs> but here, for example, look at those beauties. Just gorgeous. So this book is in English and I ordered this one from Schoolhouse Press. They are in Wisconsin. Oh, and this book, this book is being published um, and released by Patricia. So this book was sent from, arrived from Norway. So she's doing that. If you want to order that, there's information on how to do that uh, on her Instagram page and it links you to her blog which has all the information to order the book the mittens are also coming the blockers are also coming from Norway and I ordered this book came along with the one from Schoolhouse Press I also ordered this one look at how thick this is you guys oh my gosh beautiful and this book again everything is in Norwegian um this woman is all I'm not even Anne not going to attempt the last name. She is on, I believe she is on Instagram as well. Uh, I will try to find her and put her information here. And uh, this book, again, all in Norwegian, whoops, all in Norwegian. And it's got just, can you see that? Tons of patterns, tons of motifs. So you can use this book too to kind of plug in things if you are so daring. Um, to kind of plug in things yourself if you wanted to design your own and they're just I don't want to focus on the patterns too much because again the book is is a is a book if they're all in a book and I want to respect Anne's work um, but this book Patricia talks about in some of her earlier episodes and she was able to visit the museum where these books where these all of these beautiful mittens were on display it is i believe in her town or not far from where she lives in norway and her excitement over this is just tangible in in her episodes you really should go and have a look um just amazing again i feel such a connection with these mittens i really don't know why aside from their obvious beauty and so I highly recommend you go and check that out as well. Um, she didn't do any instruction for these, but again, I believe she does give you in the intro, Patricia gives you in the intro to the series for this book, she gives you translations for some of the basics. So she gives you a for the Norwegian to English translation for cast on, um, for the number of stitches that you're casting on, where it says increase, decrease, things like that. So you might be able, if you're adventurous, you might be able to figure out some of the patterns from here with the help of the knit along she's going to be doing with this book. So if you'd like to give those a look, I highly recommend them. Again, I can't wait for them to start. Um, yeah, I think I've covered all of those, and my this is a total aside, but I just had to share it. My talk. There was a book fair. One of the things that also kept me busy during that little three-week hiatus was a book fair at my daughter's school, and um, each grade gets to come down, and the librarian has all of these books by Scholastic. It's a it's a book company here in the U.S. and each grade comes down into the auditorium and they basically go shopping for books and it's it's a really great experience it's a great thing that the school does and my daughter and I, I I met I went over to her school so we could do the shopping together and she saw this book <laughs> she was I don't know which one of us was more excited and a couple once I picked it up a couple of the other parents that were wandering around they're like Denise I think there's a knitting book on a book about yarn on one of the shelves <laughs> so I am I am known as the knitting mom I'm tempted to change my name to that some days but I am the knitting mom at school and it's the cutest little book and we've already read it a few times at bedtime and it's just it's so darn cute. So if you get to pick this up, um, it's called Extra Yarn by Mac Barnett. It's really lovely. Little bedtime story. Get your kids into yarn now. I'm, I'm just so happy that my children respect that I knit and they let me knit and 
they love that I knit around them and their friends. They're not embarrassed by it. And I think now my daughter's eight and if she was going to be embarrassed, now would be the time. And she's really not. She's actually very proud of me because um, I knit at lunch duty and things like that. And the kids are all like, wow, what are you making? And I say a sock and they're like, why are you knitting a sock? And I say, because I can. And that answer is like, wow to them. I don't know why, but... Um, it makes them all very happy and, and they can't wait to see what I'm going to be knitting next lunch duty because every time I've, I've got something different on needles and they're like, did you finish that other stripey pair of socks? I'm like, yep, those are all done. This is a new pair. They're like, you're really fast. <laughs> it's, it's just fun because the kids are interested and they, and they watch me and they want to know what I'm doing and how it all works. And, um, one little boy said to me one day, he comes over to me, his name is Steven and he says, my sister crochets. And there's yarn all over the house now. She says, but you're knitting, right? I said, yeah, I am. I said, do you know the difference between crocheting and knitting? And he goes, no. <laughs> but it's so cute. He said he knows there's a difference, but he's not quite sure what it is. So I, I'm, so thank you for your question, Stephen. You're just adorable. I love all the kids in my daughter's class. So um, I think that is it for... Knitting. Oh, I did have one other. Where is it? I did have another whip. So I, I covered the other, my first whip, which was the, it was the mitten. And my second whip, I'm in the middle of the heel right now. So I just want to get this needles out of the way, is this. My knitting makes me so darn happy. These are my March socks. They are rainbow socks. Yes, that is a four leaf. Wait, where's the front of it? You can see the texture. There it is. It's a four leaf clover. It has got a beautiful texture on it. I found this charm. I made the Progress Keeper myself. I find most of my charms at Michael's Craft Store or Joann's um, Fabric and Crafts. And this came with a, what was the other thing that it came with? I think a little rainbow and a wishbone. But I just fell in love with the clover and thought it was so perfect with the rainbow. And there it is. I have got white. This yarn is, how do you pronounce it? Queer, uh, queer fibers? I, I'm... Um, can't pronounce, and I, I, maybe it's really silly and you're all laughing at me right now that I can't pronounce it, but, um, she's on Instagram and the yarn is absolutely gorgeous. The contrasting color is the natural colorway by uh, Malabrigo Sock. And I decided to drop down again. This is uh, 60 stitches, um, 2.25 high, high sharps. And this is all, would you guys believe this is one repeat? In the yarn one full repeat there are let's one two three four five six seven eight nine, 12, 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 stripes in the one repeat so I decided you can see it better here I'm starting this the heel here but what I decided to do I usually like my stripes to be my the leg of my sock to be about 70 to 75 rounds so this turned out to be 65 so I just added 10 rounds of the cream color which I actually think is really pretty because it really offsets the rainbow so that is what I did so it's 20 rounds on the cuff 65 in the rainbow and a pro I think 65 66 whatever the math is each stripe has about three to four rounds of their color and then I did 10 rounds of the cream color and now I'm working, now I'm doing the heel. I will do 10 more rounds of the cream and then start the foot and then I will add more cream at the end before I do the toe. And I might put like a teeny little bit of the, of one of the colors on the tip of the toe, I don't know yet. But, so here's my other, here's my other sock ready. March socks are on the needles. I just absolutely Love these, and it the yarn is also a tweed. It's a rainbow tweed. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. It's so fun. Oh my goodness. So it is, um, I believe this is 80, 80 to 85% superwash with 15% of the nape, the tweed nap, nape. 
in here. So that is my sock. And I will put that over there. So knitting wise, I think that that is all I have. Um, next episode, I, I did find another mitten pattern. It is called Share a Cup. I'm not going to give you a preview of what this looks like. It is not a pattern that is written on Ravelry, but it is done by the Wooly Mitten. I'm totally blanking on her name right now. Uh, but again, that'll all be here. And it is on her blog. It's a really simple mitten with a beautiful little cup motif around the cuff. And I, I just want something simple, kind of as a palette cleanser a little bit. So I may cast those on while I'm waiting for my Norwegian yarn to arrive. And I will share a picture and, and hopefully have all of that done in the next episode. But I wanted you to know what I'm thinking of doing. And knitting wise, I think that's it. I do have a little bit of sewing to show you. So let me go and grab it. So I am back with a little bit of sewing for you. Uh, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, I'm not sure if you saw the little baby shoe that I made, but here it is. Look at that, you guys. Isn't it cute? <laughs> I The leaping, the little sheep that I talked about in the last episode, I was able to fussy cut the sheep and get it on the front of the toe, front of the shoe. So when baby is laying down, that is what you will see. Uh, I thought about turning it the other way so that the baby could see the sheep, but they don't know what the sheep are at this point. It's more fun for mom to look at it. So uh, this size shoe is um, zero to three months. You can kind of get perspective if I hold it on my hand. It is really, really teeny tiny. Um, so I actually thought, and the baby is about two months old now. <laughs> my gosh, I gotta hurry up. So um, I have since made a bigger size. I went up to, I believe, six to nine months. And those are almost, I'm almost ready. They're just waiting on one more thing and those will be heading out to mom soon, uh, along with a couple of other pairs. But I did wanna show you a finished pair these are, I believe, also zero to, zero to three. And I made these for my son when he was a little wee one with the little D, which is our last name. <laughs> it's the first letter of our last name and it was dog and my daughter loves dogs. And I just thought these were so cute. And there's a little, I put these on the back. There's, oops, wait, sorry. There's a little lizard on the back. So this is all fussy cutting, you guys. And um, for the non-sewers or quilters out there, look at how cute that is. Fussy cutting is, is pretty much what it sounds like. It's, it's basically um, cutting out a specific motif on a piece of fabric so that it could be the main focus of what you are sewing. So that is what I did with these, and that is what I did with this one, which I kind of, everything has to be held this way. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Oh my gosh. So the pattern, I will put some pattern information. Of course, it's not right next to me right now, but I do, hold on, let me just go grab it. So I found them. I used two different um, patterns to make these, uh, make the little shoes. And this particular pattern is by Petite Boo. And I found this on uh, I found that again. I apologize about the glare. I found this pattern on Pinterest, and but I believe the this is a while ago. This is a number of years ago, and I believe the link may be gone. But I'm going to try to find something comparable to link down below. But what I love about this particular pattern, I don't. I'm not a fan of the instructions at all. It is they're very very fiddly. Um, the seams. This one is for invisible seams. This one is not. There are little seams on this that I will uh, put pink and shears to so it doesn't, so the inside of the shoe will still be neat. But this one, I tried this pattern. It is very, very fiddly. If the child were walking and I knew the seams were going to get in their way, then I would absolutely make the effort. But the baby is just kind of laying there or hanging out or playing on a mat or being held and coddled. So the seams don't matter that much. And my both of my children wore these shoes for most of their infancy and babyhood and it never bothered them. The minute they started taking steps, I was a little bit more careful with, uh, with the seams. But again, once they were taking steps, I went out and got them 
proper shoes anyway, so they're just, it doesn't really matter that much. But what I do like about this particular um, pattern is it offers you sizes. Let me just pull these out. And again, I, I hope you can see, it offers you sizes. So these are, this is 12 to 8, but it goes, um, let me just take this out. Yeah, okay. So this particular one is 12 to 18. This is 9 to 12, and it sizes them up for you, which is fantastic. So this pattern is has 0 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 9, 9 to 12, and then 12 to 18, which is fantastic. So if you've got a large amount of fabric and you just absolutely love it and you want to continue making either the same shoe uh, using the same fabric, you can do that. Or, oh, my, both of my, one more minute, you guys. <laughs> Wait, hold on one second. Hi, guys. Hi guys. Okay, We're now say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> hi. So it is a snow day. My babies are home and, and they have been. Erin, go, 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 the gym was out. <laughs> no, 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 don't do kisses. Go, go, go. <laughs> he was going to move the camera. I'm like, don't move the camera. So it's a snow day. They have been very. Oh, wait, he's back. Come here. Wait, don't bump the camera. Okay, say another, say another quick hello. Hello. Oh, wait, here comes Kira. She's coming back with her knitting. How are you on? I can't. Where are the yellow things? Wait, hold it right there. Get it so they can see you. She's so proud of it. And here is her I knitting. She is still see. sticking. Okay, I'm sorry, baby. She is still sticking with her knitting. She's very, very proud and yellow. pleased. Okay, yellow, hang on. Yellow, hang on. Yellow. <laughs> so, oh, wait, hold up. Okay, one second. So those were my special guests for this episode. <laughs> My kids make me so happy. They are so much fun and entertaining. Um, of course, they also make me crazy, but I'd be lying if I said they didn't. <laughs> so, um, Kira is so excited about her knitting. She's really, really happy. She's doing really well with it. So, there you go. So, back to the shoes. Um, this pattern, like I said, has the multiple sizes. This other pattern that I use, this is by Michelle Quigley, so it's michellequigley.com. The instructions, again, I'm sorry, let me move it here so there's less glare. This particular pattern, um, it's a little bit different. The actual shaping of the pieces is just a little different. Uh, I already have these cut out, but I love the instruction in these. The instructions with these are spot on, absolutely flawless they're perfect they're super easy you can honestly make a pair of these shoes in maybe an hour if if that long but both shoes a pair um so i recommend this particular pattern for instruction again I, everything will be down in the description box this is michellequigley.com but if you need your sizes then you definitely want to use the petite boo or i will try to find i'm going to look for this again i haven't looked for it in a little while i'm going to look for it again um, see if I can find the link to include here. Um, if I can't, then I will definitely look for another pattern for you that's got the multiple sizes. Um, there is a way to increase these pieces or decrease these pieces if you photocopy them. I don't remember what the percentage is. Is it 10%, 20%? .10%? I don't remember. Let me think about that one for a minute. If I don't include that in this episode, I will find out for you and either put it on Instagram or on the next episode, but you'll, I will make sure that you know where to find it. So that, um, that's it for shoes. I'm just checking notes. The other thing that I worked on sewing wise um, was this little guy. This is the kind of the prototype for you can see in there. I still have my pins in it because I was just sewing it the other night. This is a little prototype for a cube bag. And there are a lot of this style bag on Instagram right now. I'm Again, it's blowing out a lot because of the lighting. But I just used a basic uh, duck cloth in the off-white because I just really wanted an off-white bag, which is very similar to the Field Company bags. So I've got one of those. The yarn's kind of sticking out of it. But... It's a very similar fabric. Uh, this is more canvasy. This is more the duck cloth, but it's amazing how soft this gets if you just give it a quick wash. Um, it still holds up, but it when you wash it, it just it gets rid of all the sizing and everything. Sizing is is a chemical that's treated, that's sprayed onto fabric, um, so it gets rid of the sizing, which makes it a little bit 
softer. Um, so I'm playing around with this cube bag. I've seen a couple of makers on Instagram playing with this shape bag and I really wanted one because I wanted it to sit, as you can see, it sits perfectly just on its own. I can knit from it and what's nice about this what I'm doing, I use this for, um, sorry about the earthquake, with the two color mittens because I can just, the yarn just pulls right out of it. I don't have to constantly juggle the balls or, not juggle them, but I don't have to have them out on the table, which is really good. If I'm working in the kitchen or around anything, a cup of tea, I don't have to worry about anything spilling or anything. So I can keep the yarn in the bag and it stays in the right positions for me. So, but a lot of the cube bags that I've seen are a little large, um, and I wanted something a little smaller. So this base is, if you can see on the bottom, I even still have threads sticking out of it, because again, I was playing with this pattern really late one night. Um, it's a six inch square base, which is really the size I was looking for. I'm just trying to figure out right now what I want to do with the top of the bag, how I want to close the bag. Um, I don't plan on selling that pattern. Um, I might make suggestions for you on how to do it or link you to something else. Um, I'm trying to be very respectful of the designers that are that have similar shaped bags, but I still wanted to just share it with you because um, I was kind of excited about it. Um, I try very hard to respect people's ideas and I guess intellectual property, it could be called. Um, I don't have an Etsy shop, so to just kind of sell them via Instagram, I just don't think that would be fair. Um, so that is that. Um, I hope everybody understands that. And that's the perfect segue to something else I wanted to talk about. I try very hard not to be political in any way. Um, there are four forbidden topics in my life, which is parenting, religion, politics, and money and I will not discuss those topics pretty much with anyone. Very, very close friends, and even then on a limited basis, uh, I just, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with that, sharing my ideas about that, but I don't know if this falls under the category of politics on Instagram, but it's something that's going on and I just felt like I should address it just for two minutes. There's a lot of impatience that I'm seeing toward makers. For example, the biggest, most recent incident was with Nancy, who is, sorry, Natalie, who is Remembrances Pottery. She had an update on her Etsy shop, and it sold out in pretty much seconds. Um, some people were cartjacked, and it really pissed people off. And rather than just chalking it up to oh well, I'll just try again next time. Natalie got a lot of really awful comments, um, private messages, emails, pretty much yelling at her and getting really nasty because people were ticked off that they didn't get one of her mugs. And I think people forget that a lot of these makers, whether they are bag makers, pottery makers, mugs, they're sewing, whatever they are selling, stitch markers, whatever their business is, yarn dyers also, because it's huge with yarn dyers, they're doing this as part-time work. Many of them do it full-time, but even doing it full-time, it's, it's a small business, a very, very small business. It's even smaller than like your mom and pop shop on the corner. Um, it's small business. A lot of them do these businesses out of their homes, out of their kitchen sinks, out of on their sewing machines, and you know, in their bedrooms late at night when the kids are sleeping, which is pretty much when I sew. And I think people forget that and they get really angry and they want what they want. And I understand that. I have tried to get, I do have one of Natalie's mugs, but it took a really long time for me to get one because I would either miss her updates or things would sell out very quickly. The whole point of this is to just ask people to be patient, to be kind, to respect the fact that again, sorry, that's my son in the background, to respect the fact that these are your average person doing this and creating these things because they love it. They love to make things. And Natalie did an Insta story, um, 
a live Insta story talking and addressing what happened and she was rattled by it. She was really, really rattled by it and I, I just thought it was awful. Um, I jumped on, I commented and she's amazing. She's very talented but again, there's only so many mugs that fit in the kiln at one time. There's only so much she can do at one time because she does work. Just be patient, people. If you don't get one, you'll get one. Just be patient. Or maybe you won't get one. And that's okay, too. I, one of the things or the thoughts that gets me through the day is just because I want something doesn't mean I'm going to have it or doesn't mean I'm supposed to have it. I know I'm only talking about a mug or I'm talking about indie dyed yarn. Um, in this case, that can apply to bigger things in your life. But if the yarn sells out in an update, the mug sells out, the stitch markers, the bags, whatever it is that sells out, just wait. Just be patient. They will make more. Hopefully down the line, you will get one. Harassing, sending hostile messages isn't going to make you get one any faster. <laughs> it's not. It's not. What is what is the purpose of sending that much negativity out into the world and aiming it at somebody? It's not going to improve the situation. Uh, it's like people honking their horn in traffic. <sniffs> Honk all you want. You're still not going anywhere. And it creates noise. It creates chaos. It creates anxiety in people. There is a, a dyer, a yarn dyer. I won't say who, what her name is, but she got so much heat from people getting angry at her because her yarn sold out so quickly that she's not on IG anymore. She's not on Instagram anymore. I haven't seen her there in more than a year. And I believe she posted about the pressure and she just needed to walk away. And I think that's awful. Maybe she's selling somewhere else. Maybe she's still doing it. Um, I just think it's tragic that somebody with that type of skill and that type of talent succumbed and I, I'm not going to say gave in because um, that implies that the weakness is hers but that she was driven away I just don't think that's fair so I will get off my soapbox this is about as intense a rant as you will ever see me do um, I'm just asking for tolerance for patience um, I know not all by any stretch, but I do know some of these makers um, and I just am asking for patience for them. Show them some love, show them some patience, give them encouragement. The encouragement and the praise will probably even encourage them to make more faster than the negativity because if that were aimed at me, I would just stop sewing or I would stop making. Um, I think it would bug me so much that I was making so many people unhappy that I would just, I would melt. I mean, you all have seen, if you've been watching the podcast since the beginning, I get very emotional over a baby shoe and over, you know, compliments and comments that people are giving me here. I, I love that recognition and the validation that people give me through the comments and how much they enjoy the podcast. And, you know, if all of a sudden there's, and I'm sure at some point I will get negativity and that's okay too, but I think to get it at the level that, that Natalie and some of these other people get it, I, I don't think I could handle it. I really don't. I really and truly don't. So kindness, a little patience. Um, and that's what I wanted to say about that. Again, I, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. Um, I believe that if people have a platform for their voice that they should use it for things uh, as many people do in the world regarding other topics I am a consumer I am a knitter so I purchase from these people I love the yarn I love the indie yarn I love my remembrances pottery mug um, and again even to make this bag I love the bag I can sew so I looked at this and looked at that and looked at this and looked at that and kind of just made a hodgepodge. I wrote down notes as I went along. But I wouldn't sell the bag because I don't want to encroach on anyone else's business. Um, I don't know that I would give instructions for the bag, as I said, because I don't want to take away, again, from someone else's business. Um, 
I was just kind of excited about it and wanted to talk about it. So I hope everybody understands that. <sighs> okay, enough. I'm done. So thank you for listening to that. Um, and going forward, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I would like to start a series here on my channel regarding two circular needles. I get a lot of questions and have gotten questions on how you use them, how you go from one needle to the other, how you transfer stitches. Um, in the last episode, I answered a question, if you put your yarn or your project down and you pick it back up, how do you know which direction you're going in? So, and a lot of people use DPNs or they use magic loop. There's not that many, and if there are, I don't see a lot of them. Um, there are not that many people using two circular needles, so I thought, and you can, you can go on YouTube, um, right here on YouTube, and you can find tutorials on how to use them. I just thought I would throw my hat into the tutorial ring and um, do my own little series, so I will be doing that soon, and those will be under a separate playlist here on the channel under tutorials. Uh, as I said before too, I'm going to pull out any tutorials I've already done and put those on a separate playlist for everybody so that you can access that information. So stay tuned for that. I have no idea <laughs> what the next week or two is going to bring. I hoped at the end of last week that I'd be back within two weeks. It took three. So I will simply say that I will see you all again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that thumbs up button. Um, please subscribe if you've stumbled onto my podcast. And I'm grateful to all of you. This makes me very, very happy. Again, as I say all the time, it makes me happy to have this space to share with you all. And I hope to see you all again really, really soon. Keep knitting, everybody. Um, please leave a comment. I love hearing from you. And enjoy your snow day. If you were in a snowy location, enjoy the snow day. I will post some pictures in this episode, of course I will, of the snow and uh, our adventures. I'm going to take the kids outside later and we're going to play. Um, my husband should be coming home soon, so there's going to be lots of shoveling to do. <laughs> snow is kryptonite to Chris. He just can't. He hears about snow and he's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Honey, it's okay. It'll melt. Okay. So anyway, um, lots of snowy adventures later. I will see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for joining me. You are all incredible. And I will see you all, as I said, I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much. You all are the best. Stay warm. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.